Hello everybody and welcome back to whatever the hell this is. Today I'm going to be going over my favorite film cameras of 2020. Forgot what year it was for a second there, but it, it is 2020, right? I'm going to be going over some of my personal favorite cameras. They also happen to be the best film cameras that I think are out as of right now. I'm going to briefly talk about each camera and also going to show you some image samples to go along with them. So let's get right to it. Okay, starting off with the big boys, we have the Mimiya RB67. I don't think this camera needs much of an introduction, although you do need to know it is very difficult to hold this thing with one hand. Shot about half a dozen rolls through it. If you're looking into getting a 6x7 camera, I think the RB67 is the cheapest option as of right now. I could be wrong on that. <laughs> I know the RZ67 are blowing up in prices right now. I've actually shot an RZ67 before and I gotta tell you it's really not much different from an RB. You'll definitely see more videos on this camera from me in the future so keep on the lookout. Next up is my Rolleiflex. Now this is a Rolleiflex 3.5 E2. It comes equipped with a 75mm 3.5 Xenotar lens. I hope I pronounced that right. I've owned this camera for about six months and I've shot dozens and dozens of rolls through this thing. Uh, it's honestly one of my favorite cameras of all time. I am going to dedicate an entire video on this camera and just me reviewing it, my thoughts on it, me using it out in the public, me being approached by a buttload of people <laughs> annoying me with their silly questions and them giving me the what the hell is wrong with you look. So yeah, be on the lookout for that video. Uh, it will come soon, I hope. So yeah, the Rolleiflex 3.5. Amazing, amazing camera. Oh. Next up, we got the Shikimat 124G. This was actually my first medium format camera ever. I bought it for about $200 two years ago, and I think they go for like three or 400 as I'm told. I don't know if that's correct. <laughs> yeah, this thing is kind of skyrocketing at the moment, and to be honest, it's really justified. I think this is an absolutely great camera. Um, not only for a beginner, just for anybody who wants to shoot medium format. Yeah, I know I just talked about the Rolleiflex being the best TLR ever. And this is the Rolly Flex copy. But to be honest, this camera holds its own, I think. It's lighter, it's more discreet. Uh, it has a light meter, which is a huge thing. I think this is a great camera for whoever wants to get into medium format or TLRs in general. Um, it's a lot cheaper than the Rolly Flex, and it's really not too different, like I said. The 80mm 3.5 lens that comes equipped with this camera is just amazing. Super sharp, has great contrast. Great camera, would absolutely recommend this over Rolleiflex any day for a beginner, primarily because of the light meter and it's a lot more affordable. <laughs> so yeah, Yoshika Mat 124G. Moving on to SLRs, this is my Nikon F, the first model of the Nikon F series. Uh, it's a legendary camera. This was almost a standard issue camera for the press photographers back in the 60s and 70s. In fact, most of the war photographers that covered the Vietnam War used this camera. And I just think that's a really cool thing. It really makes this camera legendary in my book. This camera is rugged. It looks rugged, it looks tough, it has a decent weight to it. I mean, if I were to drop this camera on concrete, the camera wouldn't break, but the concrete will definitely crack. I have a 50mm 1.4 lens on this thing. This camera is all manual, no batteries needed. Um, it is just like ultimate camera. Cool thing about this camera is that the top viewfinder does come off, which is really convenient because whenever you want to get those super low shots, you don't have to lay on the floor flat on your stomach. And also when it comes to like street photography, it's a really helpful tool when you want to be discreet about it. I've actually taken a few photos this way uh, where I just take the viewfinder off and I just act like I'm cleaning my camera. When in reality, I'm just focusing my shot and taking the picture. And yeah, I really managed to sneak a few shots that way and nobody ever noticed. The next camera on my list is the Canon A1. This camera really doesn't need an introduction. I'm sure you've heard of this camera. This is definitely one of my favorite cameras in my collection. 
uh, just it feels just amazing in my hands it's definitely one of the more professional cameras that I have in my collection I mean the light meter is really accurate it covers a wide range of ISOs it goes from ISO 6 to 12,800 um, which is just bananas I've actually made a video where I shot ISO 6 film through this camera that video will be linked down below in the description i do plan on pushing film all the way to 12,800, and of course it will be done with this camera because then i can say i maxed out isos i mean i shot the lowest iso on this camera and i'm going to shoot the highest iso on this camera If you're trying to get into film, uh, this is honestly a great camera to start with. I mean, I mentioned it is a professional camera, but it's just as good for a beginner. And if you already have a beginner camera and you're looking to upgrade, great option as well. The cameras are getting smaller and smaller. Next up is my Pentax ME. Or is it me? I don't know. This camera is just a tiny, tiny little tiny tiny little guy probably the most compact slr that i have i mean i could totally hide this camera behind my hand here and it's just gone great camera if you're going somewhere you don't want to pack a lot and you don't just want to take a point and shoot <laughs> this is a great slr camera i mean i think i could almost fit this in my pocket yep fits in my pocket I mean, you could definitely notice it, but it fits in my pocket. I mean, SLRs aren't nowhere near pocket size, but this camera kind of challenges that notion. <laughs> Obviously, you wouldn't put this in the pocket for real, but uh, it is compact enough to store it away. Probably the best camera to go on a family vacation on, to be honest. And the reason why I say that is because camera is aperture priority. The camera does the work for you without being automatic. You could definitely choose your aperture, but that's pretty much it. And the reason why that's good, because if you're on a family trip and you want pictures taken of you and you want it to be properly exposed, I can always hand off this camera to a family member who doesn't know anything about anything. And I'm sure they could almost take a good decent picture of you which never happens as long as they get you in focus that is which they probably won't uh who am i kidding just take a point shoot with you <laughs> speaking of point shoots we have the shika t4 this camera i only got recently i've only shot two rolls through it so far i do think it does live to the hype of being the shika t4 i mean i absolutely love the pictures that this thing takes um, one of my favorite things about this camera is that it does have a waist level viewfinder. Uh, it's called a super scope in this camera, but it's a waist level finder. It's, let's not complicate things. It is especially helpful when it comes to street photography. You just walk around, act like you don't know what the hell you're doing, and you compose and you take a shot. It really helps you stay really discreet when it comes to street photography. Just an all-out great camera, huge fan of it. I will dedicate a video to this, um, but I first need to shoot a lot more rolls of film through it. Like I said, I only shot two rolls, and yeah, I'm working on changing that. So, Yashika T4. Next up, we got the Minolta Talker. <laughs> I am laughing, but this is one of my favorite point shoots ever. I know I just spoke about the Yashika T4, and um, now I'm pulling out this silly camera. But this camera is really great. Uh, it does compact with a 35mm 2.8, and it also comes with lens attachments. This is a wide angle lens attachment. It just turns it into a 28 millimeter. I also have a telephoto attachment. I think it takes it from a 35 millimeter to a 40 millimeter. So it's really not a huge difference. But with this wide angle lens, you do notice a difference. Another thing that I really like about this camera is that the flash doesn't automatically go off. You do have to engage it by pushing that and that activates the flash, which is really convenient when it comes to other point and shoots like the Yashica T4. Whenever you turn that camera on, the flash just invites himself onto the party like nobody invited you, go away. I don't really use flash all that often, which is why I prefer a camera like this where you really have to go out of your way to activate the flash. 
I did dedicate a video to this, which will be linked down below in the description box along with uh, all my other videos. You could just, just go watch them all. Next camera is a Canon AS6. This is a waterproof camera that I picked up for a dollar at a thrift store like two years ago. It comes with a 35 millimeter f4.5 lens. It has the ability to float on water, which is super helpful. And the fact that it's yellow means that you will never lose this camera in the pool or in the ocean or wherever you're at. I mean, I personally think anybody that lives by a coast should own this camera. I probably shot dozens of rolls through this thing, um, took it to the beach plenty of times. So yeah, great little camera, highly recommend it. They don't go for a lot as of right now. Um, hopefully they won't skyrocket. <laughs> Definitely do get one before they do skyrocket in price. Cause I really do think this camera is worth it. I mean, I only paid a dollar for it. I would honestly pay like 30 for this. Uh, great camera and yeah. Last but definitely not least, we have the Canonet QL17. Rangefinder camera, comes with a 40 millimeter 1.7 lens. Shot hundreds of photos with this thing. Um, took it absolutely everywhere with me. Just always on my side. It's a long story, but I accidentally broke it, as you could probably hear. Yeah, Canon QL17, amazing camera. May it rest in pieces. So yeah, those were my favorite film cameras of 2020 so far. Just want to say this isn't a collection video. Uh, I do have a lot more film cameras than this. I think that was only like 10. I don't know, I wasn't counting. <laughs> I don't know if I'll ever dedicate an entire video to my camera collection because that would just be bananas. I recently hit 100 subscribers in this channel, which <laughs> may sound pathetic, but honestly, just to think that 100 of you press that subscribe button is just really exciting um so thank you for that definitely be on the lookout for more videos for me i am working on that Rolly flex video post about once a week hopefully one day i'll be able to post twice a week that would be cool this 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 is getting annoying definitely be on the lookout for that Rolly flex video that's coming pretty soon and also for other videos in general if you're not subscribed please do hit that red button and uh whatever else you're supposed to do um, I'm really not good at this. <laughs> Let me know down below in the comments what your favorite film camera is and also what cameras you plan on buying this year. It would really make me feel better to know that I'm not the only one wasting my money on these things. Um, so yeah, definitely comment away. With all that being said, till next time. Was that obnoxious enough? I think it was. Okay, time to edit this.